Welcome back. Here in Western New York, we love our celebrities and we love to welcome them back home. One of our favorite rock stars will always have a home here because it's the same one that he grew up in. With nine albums, more than a dozen top 10 singles, and $10 million in record sales, the Goo Goo Dolls are one of Buffalo's most popular and celebrated exports. Bassist and founding member Robbie Takak comes from just south of the city. His parents, Mary and Bob, still live here. We're just regular people, you know, um, just middle class people. Uh, there's about six that are still the same neighbors from when we moved in. Robbie and his family moved into this single story home in West Seneca when he was in third grade and his parents haven't left since. It was a wonderful neighborhood to grow up. You weren't afraid to have them outside, and and there were kids their age. The fact is, when we moved in, Robbie ran door to door to see, did they have any girls? Now, the neighbors didn't understand he was looking for his sister. You know, he wanted a, a companion for his sister, but they st still talked about Robbie going around looking for girls <laughs> at the door. <laughs> Being friendly with the ladies wasn't the only sign that Takak's son might be destined for a career in music. His favorite song was Running Bear Loves Little White Dove, and he'd play it on his guitar and sing for us. This is like when he was three, and he was just a hoot. Shy, I don't know how they come together, but he was a little shy, but loved the performance part. When Robbie moved into the basement as a teenager, he chose rock star wallpaper and invited his friends over to practice in the space outside his bedroom. And we, we tried for years to tell them, loud doesn't mean good. And they would practice and things would fall off the wall. It was so loud that things would jiggle off the wall upstairs. Robbie left home the day after he graduated from Madai College. His parents were a little skeptical about what he would do next. No, we bought him a record that said, get a haircut and get a real job. How does to Pete? <laughs> Except that he knew if anything happened, we were here, he could come, he could come back home. Um, it, it, he never did, uh, but he, he knew we were here and that we would bail him out, and, and he, he tells us that was the greatest thing. Fast forward a couple decades, and Robbie's mom and dad could not be prouder. He did come back to Buffalo, where he settled down with his wife and young daughter. Grandma and Grandpa get to watch Hannah twice a week. And he's, he's never, never gets well-headed. Uh, you never wanted to go and slap him and say, you're from South Buffalo, just stop this. <laughs> Nonsense. You never got that with him. Robbie's too embarrassed to display the memorabilia, awards, and fan art he's racked up in his own home, but leave it to a beaming Buffalo mom to do a little redecorating in that old basement bedroom. We have three uh, books here that are scrapbooks for, from a year and a half that people from all over sent to the one fan club and they made it into uh, three scrapbooks that are invaluable. They are wonderful. And they have, um, they've sent us a lot of individual artwork that they do, and they've sent us uh, dolls. And they, it just, people are really wonderful uh, about it. Mary herself saves every single newspaper clipping, magazine article, and ticket stubs she can get her hands on. I just love having his things here uh, to remember that he had, you know, all of the success and he worked like a dog for it. And uh, there was nothing else was important uh, except getting there. All right, and Robbie's family isn't the only thing that's keeping him rooted here in Western New York. We met his daughter, Hannah, in that piece. But his foundation, Music is Art, is his other baby. That's what his mom says. And we have two of the board members here. We have Robert Zielinski and yeah. Phil Agulia here from the Music is Art Foundation. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. And just in case our viewers don't know yet, of course, we always have Robbie on once a year to talk about the foundation. But in case people don't know, tell us what Music is Art does. Uh, music is Art, uh, our... Our main marquee event is our festival, which happens in September. And this past year, we had over 100 bands and dancers and visual artists. And it's a free event for the community to come on out and 
see what Western New York has to offer as far as arts and music goes, and it gives exposure to our local musicians. Uh, last year we had 25,000 people show up. That's the type of exposure that a lot of these musicians wouldn't get otherwise. And, uh, it's a great you know, course, event. I, yeah. I actually danced in it one year. I had a wonderful time. But it's so it's such an inspiring, creative place to be. But unfortunately, you guys are here to talk about an unfortunate circumstance that happened at the a festival this year. Yeah, that's correct. We had we had terrible rain this year. And unfortunately, when you're coordinating an event uh, with hundreds of bands and well over 200 volunteers. You can't plan for a rain day. No, Coordinating tough. that, you only have one day. And uh, it's the risk you take. And, and because of the rain, we had our expenses went through the roof because we had to rent every tent in town. Uh, you know, our production company, we had to protect all their equipment, not to mention the band's equipments and everything. We had a great festival. Everyone who was there really enjoyed it. It was a great time. Unfortunately, we didn't get the revenue we expected because merch sales were down, refreshment sales were down, right. and we really re rely on that, not just to fund the festival, but to fund all our other programs, our education programs. And that you're are doing really wonderful important. things in the schools here in Western New York. You're helping students get access to learning music and to learning instruments um, that they might not have otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. In, in another weather event, we had our Mardi, uh, Mardi Gras jam in Buffalo. We had the Dirty Dozen Brass Band come into town, and, and that event was also snowed out. Uh, we, was, we, still, we still had it at the Trough, but there was very few people there, and we even hosted a school from Las Vegas to take part in the clinics with the kids from Kenmore East. To, Which is with such the a Dirty great Dozen. opportunity. So yeah. exciting. Um, but what you're doing right now is if someone would like to donate to help you cover the cost that you kind of ate at the festival this year, there's someone that's going to match that donation. Isn't that correct? Uh, there, there was. We had an anonymous donor come and offer a match. Uh, that donor did. We had overwhelming response. And that's people so did come in and we got a lot of donations. That donor did cap their match. So well, that's from, wonderful news. Yeah, so we did reach the donor's goal for the match. Great. Um, however, if you'd still like to donate to help Music is Art, you can go to musicisart.org and donate to us. Um, it's very easy to go do it, and you can also sign up and get emails, get on our emailing list, Thanks. and to, to find our events throughout the year. We got a lot of great programming. Our programs are always evolving, and we're trying to grow, and we're only limited by the funds that we receive, and we're completely publicly funded. And about 90 cents of every dollar that's donated goes directly to our programming. We, we run a real lean operation. That's so. great. I mean, I, I can't think of a better cause than helping students get access to music and help their own creativity uh, creativity floor. So thank you, Robert and uh, Phil, for being here today. Musicisart.org is the website in case you would like to donate to Robbie's Foundation.